okay. Welcome back for the next panel discussion. Um, I'm Barney O'Hanlon from the City Company and uh, Stephen Weber from the City Company will just be facilitating this ginormous conversation. Um, so welcome back to the HowlRound folks. Thanks for being here. Um, I was hoping the tables were gonna stay up so we could perform a scene from The Last Supper. <laughs> but we'll just have to deal with this semicircle, <laughs> which I made. So. Um, so legacy is a ginormous word and it feels very weighty at the moment. It feels substantial. Um, so before we go down there, and I'd like to open it up earlier to, uh, to a conversation with all of us a little bit earlier, I think. Um, can we just go down our little semicircle and if you would introduce yourselves and your company and where, where your company lives in the world. <laughs> this is fascinating because this is a really global, global panel. And my name is John Alex Soto. I'm from Colombia. I live in Bogota, Colombia. And uh, we met as a company, or we started this project of a company, not really a company, but a bunch of friends that were together and that the train is putting together. In 2010, I met uh, Lorenzo and Tina, and I met before uh, Gina, and uh, we started there, and I live in Bogota, and Gina. I'm Gina Jaime, I'm from Bogota, I'm from Colombia, I'm from Bucaramanga, I live in Bogota, uh, we are here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tina Mitchell, I'm from Australia, I live in New York. Um, I think our company's based in Colombia, I think, I think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <Maybe>. great. <laughs> yeah. I'm, my name is Lorenzo Montanini and as you can guess I'm from Italy, um, but I live in Spain in Barcelona. Uh, and yes, I guess our company is based in Colombia. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, 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 the actual name of the company is, is Colombian. It's Colombian. It's called Vueltas Bravas. This is live. I'll explain you later what it means. <laughs> <laughs> and you should know that they currently uh, have a show opening this Thursday called Miss Julia at La Mama until the 25th of June. Please come. If you're in New York, please come. We'll be very happy to friends. Meet, see your face. These are amazing people, and let's keep going down the amazing people list. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mia, um, and we're from Nine Years Theatre, Singapore, uh, and we're a Singapore Mandarin theatre company. We produce shows, perform in Mandarin, always with English subtitles because our society is very multicultural. Um, and in the company, I'm the company director, which means I just take care of all the shit. <laughs> <laughs> it means and, she's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> and an actor, yeah. So I produce, I act, and um, I also listen to instructions from the director. <laughs> um, she pays my salary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Nelson, uh, I'm from Singapore, and uh, we're, we're quite sure um, we're stationed in Singapore. <laughs> we're not going anywhere, but we're working from there. So, um, yes, um, I think one thing to highlight is that uh, the company focuses a lot on uh, actor training. That's why we're here, so uh, I think that, that's it for now. Yeah. Great. Uh, hello, I'm Megan Hanley. And Logistics! <laughs> <laughs> to make, but we'll do it <laughs> um, I'm the co-artistic director of The Syndicate, and we are based in five different cities right now. Uh, actually, five different places. We're not all urban. Some of us are also rural. Um, and so we talk about ourselves as being a decentered theater company, um, or Jonathan's company talks about being a, a super geographic company, oh which I love. <laughs> he's, he's the artistic director of In the Water. Um, and so uh, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, which is one of our producing homes. Hi, I am Yanuka Hosen. I'm from the Netherlands, and I think I'm the most decentered <laughs> <laughs> of our company. Um, yeah, and I'm also a founding member of the syndicate. Hi, I'm Lee Hendricks. Um, 
I am a founding member of the syndicate. Um, I was in New York when we began, uh, but now I am based in Huntington, Pennsylvania, a town of 7,000 people, um, uh, where I just completed teaching uh, for the, my first year at Juniata College. So, um, yeah, I, that is where I am based now. So, legacy. Legacy. It's, it's, it, it's us. We are here. Um, and one of the first things um, I want to ask, um, how, did you, how did you meet and decide to become a company? What was the, uh, the seed that got planted? The seed? Sure. I met all of these people in separate city company trainings. Um, Gina first, then Lorenzo, then John Alex. And in one training, John Alex and I were paired together a lot. Ellen put us in scenes all the time. And I was like, oh, this guy's fierce. I want to work with him. And then one session, he came up to me and said, I want to work with you. You'll come to Colombia. And that happens a lot in these sessions. And you go, sure, 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 that's going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, sure, it is. It's going to happen. You name the show. And I said, well, I want to do Miss Julie. I'm thinking bilingual, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, sure, you play Miss Julie, I play Jean, who should direct? And we were in the same workshop as Lorenzo, and we said, crazy idea, he lives in Italy, but maybe he comes and directs, sure, let's have him, and uh, who plays Christina? Ah, oh, I know this amazing Colombian actress, she was with me in Saratoga in 2009, Gina Jaimez, how about, yes, I know her too, let's do it. <laughs> and the, ah. next, the, next, the next thing you know, we're in Bogota, yep. <laughs> and we with Jay Ed, with Jay Ed, with Jay Ed yeah. sitting in John Alex's lounge room, and Jay Ed was like, "I'll write the adaptation for you." And we're like, "Cool, okay, this is happening." Okay, yes. and that, that's just kind of how it happened. And we never really said we're formally gonna make this company. We just it came out of doing a show together, and we've done eight seasons of that show, and that's that's kind of how it's. We are together. here together. Yeah. For me, it has to do, to, to do with what well, I read in Ann Boger's book about when you have an idea and you start a process with that idea, there are a lot of forces that come around you and help you to make real that idea. And that started to happen when uh, I was saying, I remember the country, no? That Lorenzo and Tina approached me and said, let's get a beer. And about <laughs> it. Anyway. Uh, and then I was asking them to come to Colombia and see that we have a festival that is huge there. It's called Festival Iberoamericano de Teatro. And uh, it was an opportunity to get together and see if we can do some process of rehearsal and get to some point. And in that festival, J.F. was teaching a workshop as well. So he was coming to Colombia three days before he was starting teaching. And I was uh, housing all these people in my house in Bogota. <laughs> and we were having a uh, breakfast together, lunch together, dinner together, and rehearsing in the living room of my house, and then going to a little theater, and starting this process. And it came to be a show that we did in 2012 as a work in progress in the city studio in Manhattan. And then um, we finally finished the work in Bogota in 2013, and get an invitation to the Iberoamericana in 2014, and get an invitation to Festival de Teatro de Manizales in Colombia as well that same year, and Medellin, and then Cadiz at Spain, and then Napoli, and then another season in Bogota as well. So here we are. <laughs> Keep <Great>. going. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And Nelson and Mia, how about the origin story of Nine Years Theatre? How, how did we meet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are husband and wife. Well, so he came to Siri um first, nine years ago because I had to stay home to take care of our twins. Um, and then I came five years ago, so we, we were here separately. And then uh, almost immediately after I went back, we started Nine Years Theatre. So a lot of us ask, uh, why is it called Nine Years? And then we would say, well, because it took us nine years to, to realize why we needed to form this company. Because previously we just wanted to, oh, let's form a company, but what for? Hmm. But, but then after that, we knew. Yeah. I think, I think it, it goes back a, a, a little you know, uh, while ago. Um, in 2006, actually, the city company was in Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, performing at the Art Festival. And a couple of 
you guys, even included, were there. And then they, they brought workshops to Singapore. So as a, as a young, actually not so young actor, right, I, I attended the workshop. And actually before that, I was uh, already thinking that, you know, um, there should be some kind of things for actors to do while they're not rehearsing or trying to perform a play. So in between, what do we do? Most of us book a holiday to Bali. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that can't be it, I was thinking. That can't be it, there's something in between. So um, I know it's a kind of actor training, but I, I don't know how, I've not seen anything like that. So in the workshop, I encountered the Suzuki method and viewpoints, and I was like, that's it. Huh. Yeah. That's it. Mm. That's the thing I was looking for, right? And then 2006, and then two years passed. 2008, I came to the city summer, and uh, following that, 2012, uh, Mia came to the city summer, and in between, both of us uh, went to Toga as well, we trained with the, the Scott company. And yes, some, something like nine years passed, and then uh, we decided we, we need to have a company. Um, I would just like to just point out one thing, that um, I was inspired partly by um, and story. I, I know you used to tell a story about your meeting with Arun Mushkin, where as a young director, you ask her, um, um, you know, any advice for a young director, and she said to have a company. What are you going to do without a company, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and she said something. I like, don't don't get me wrong. They'll break your heart. Right? You'll break <laughs> your heart. Yes. <laughs> so um, I told Mia that let, let's be prepared to get hurt and you know have our heart broken, but we need to have a company and and. Therefore, we had a company. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, well, so the syndicate, we, um, we talk about ourselves. Um, one of the ways we talk about ourselves at this, we're celebrating our third birthday currently, as we like to call it, as we um, hit these marks together. Um, and we talk about ourselves as, like we're, as a company that is um, mostly women, but not all are female identified and we are a lot of us are queer but not all of us and that that is that's a that is in some ways that's a big part of what we're doing together why we're together is to um develop highlight elevate explore queer and female voices and bodies both the seven of us there's we're, there are seven of us currently and then other and, and, and other artists that we can support um, and make work with. Uh, so that's sort of just a little bit about how we talk about ourselves, how we see ourselves. Um, and then, but we did. We met one another through the training and because of City Company. Um, and so we were six of us um, in the first um, City Conservatory class. We all individually have different, you know first points of contact with the training and with City um, and uh, and Megan. I was on logistics. Was on logistics. <laughs> <laughs> we all got to get you a Megan Hanley. Sorry, we can't have her because we do. Um, because, and so and so it was it was it was through the process of, of nine months of working together with other awesome artists, some of whom are also here today from our from our conservatory class and with City Company. But it, it keeps as it keeps coming up. It's about people, right? We keep talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, so we needed, yes, it's the training, and yes, it was um, a shared enthusiasm for that that first brought us into the same place. It was City Company and our desire to be near these artists that brought us into the same place. And then I think, I also want to say, like, I think uh, Megan Carter uh, is a real reason why we were able to come together mm -hmm. and be, um, figure out how to do this thing a great mentor and friend to us as well. Um, and we just started, I don't know, I think it started, M Megan and I had an impulse around the particular project that we, that ultimately became our first show that we all made together, um, an adaptation of the Bacchae called Civility. It's an exclamation point. <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and it was, oh, we're excited and we have questions in this play. It was uh, actually in a class with Megan Carter, where we were talking about the Bacchae, and I was like, this play is so queer without even doing anything about it. We, I want to do it. And, um, and I told Megan, I was like, yeah. And then it's like, who else is, oh, Yanuka and Eleanor Riley Condit and Emily Spaulding, now Tika, 
you know, Alana Kobe, who, 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 Andrea Setkov, you know, we gotta, and, 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 and here we are. And, um, and for me personally, that's why I got, came, went to New York even, was to find my people. And so I did, we did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How many uh, company members in nine years? Um, currently, we have uh, seven actors, but it will be down to six uh, by the end of this year. So, um, uh, six, I would say. Yeah. Um, including Mia, so, so the company director, but she's, she's an actress as well. She's in the ensemble. So, six ensemble and uh, one artistic director and one other um, administrative executive. Mm. Do you have a space? We have a little studio about um, 80 square meters. So, sorry, I, I come from the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> 80 square meters, a uh, small studio where we do everything in there, um, including ad admin work, logistics. <laughs> it's kind of like a storeroom once in a while. Yeah, yeah and, and definitely rehearsal space, workshop space, classes, everything. And this sort of, sorry, I'm just going. Yeah. Um, yeah. This sort of gets a little bit, so you have a space you don't have a Clearly space. Don't. <laughs> you don't have a space. How do you do it? How do you get together? How do you how do you make work? That's that's one of the problems. One of the <laughs> yeah. big problems that's there. Um, basically, what happened with us is that um, when we started, as John Alex said before, we went to Colombia, and he was uh, nice enough to find a space for us, and so we started rehearsing there. Uh, and then we all went away and one year passed. But we said next year we're gonna all go to New York and we need to find a space. So we asked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, yes, the space is available, please come. And we stayed in your studio for I think 10 days? How long it was? 10 days. Mm -hmm. And that's when we made the show. We rehearsed 10 days, basically <laughs> morning yeah. to night. Uh, and at the end of those 10 days we did an open um, work in progress version of it and um, that was it and then we had again all of us we had to go away and another year passed <laughs> uh, but we managed to get uh, a theater in in Bogota that wanted to, to, to see the show and to have the show so we one year later we all went back to Bogota and this time we had a theater so we did our first season uh, there uh, and again, the story repeats, then we got invited to a festival, but we had to wait another year in between. <laughs> so we stay in touch a lot. Thank God we have Skype and <laughs> WhatsApp <laughs> and all of that. Uh, so a lot of the work actually gets done from the distance. And once we are together, we try to, yes, maximize time, <laughs> everything. Yeah. And also because we're traveling, it happens that Wherever we go, one of us is in charge of producing, organizing, <laughs> whatever. When we went to Italy, I had to do everything. When we got to Colombia, John Alex and Gina took care of stuff. Now that we're in New York, Tina's in charge of it. Uh, so we just, you know, <laughs> put different shoes on depending on what we have to do and we try to do the work. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah we, ha we have the same actually that we ask City for Spain. <laughs> but we also try to make, create work over the internet when Skype works. Um, so, um, do you rehearse? Do you rehearse via Skype? Yes, so that was, yeah. And then time becomes really important because when I am available for Skype, I'm having dinner, Andrea is having breakfast, and in New York they're having lunch, right? So, <laughs> we eat together, um, but it's a different meal. So, time, time is very consumed. That makes it also very practical. Mm -hmm. We worked very hard to get into the same room together, though. Yeah. Um, Unuka's really been pushing us in a good way, a very good way, to make sure that every year we bring the whole company back together. Um, and we do when we're rehearsing plays, when we're getting, when we're in performance mode, we we get the company together as many as we can. Um, we're also fortunate that we've had because we're based in many places. I think we have access to different, more. Uh, diversity of institutions than we would otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so we spent two summers at the Chicago Performance Lab, which is based out of the University of Chicago, mm -hmm. um, which was an incredible gift. And um, there is something about not being in one place that opens up opportunities. Yeah. But it, it, as you're saying, it's you have to, um, <laughs> whoever's, whoever's home base it is has to work real hard <laughs> to make it happen. And it's wearing two hats and it's hard. 
But it's interesting because I, I think on this stage we represent sort of the last um, non-net natives. <laughs> we are the last people to have known a world before the internet. Right. Um, yeah, my little brother's four years younger than me and he has never known a world without the internet. So there is something very different about the way I think uh, this generation of artists thinks about collaboration because of that. I think that, that the training that we all share comes in at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we are able to immediately start working together, even if you know it's one year after the last time we saw each other. So we enter the room, we're like, okay. Yeah. We put our tabis on, train 10, 15 minutes and do the work and yeah. do the thing. And it actually, it, that surprised me a lot, but it doesn't matter that one year went by. Somehow, yes, we all have our lives. We do a lot of different things. Of course, we cannot survive out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when we are together, somehow we all share language, you know, uh, an approach to the work. And we have all those instruments that allow us to immediately start working yeah. together and do the thing so that it mm -hmm. becomes very practical and somehow easy. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can do so many things over the internet right now, but the thing we can do is having the energy in the room and, and, and share the energy on stage and watch each other. That is something that I really miss when we're not together, because that is something you can do over the internet. Mm -hmm. So the training provides us to center ourselves again because we're decentralized, yeah. And how does having a space affect the kind of training you do or how you use the training or how your company stays together? Well, um, in, the in the beginning, but, but also I think we're, we're kind of, um, the, the origin of the company is kind of different and, and inform the way we would go ahead. Uh, but I think right at the beginning, we, we were quite certain that we needed a space. Uh, because there was the, also the intention to, um, to share the training and to let people know about the training and our work. So, so I thought having a, a, a kind of a base and for the actors to, to congregate and people to come uh, to the space and encounter the training. So that is quite important for us. So, so hence the, um, that, that serves as a kind of base for us to, for us to do that. Um, I think in, in an interesting way we were talking about it yeah. the other day that also um, because uh, uh, some of these groups are geographically challenged, <laughs> the members are all over the place and, and in Singapore because it's so small, mm -hmm. it's easy kind of for us to uh, say you, you just have to take a bus and then we are all in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're there, but constantly I was telling you that you know, uh, in the long term in, uh, in, uh, our aim is to actually get out of the city, yeah. find another place. So we have a base there but we need somewhere else that we can retreat to, to, to do some other kind of training or work. And in Singapore, it's hard to find that place. Um, I'm, I'm even thinking Malaysia or um, maybe some offshore islands. <laughs> the problem is how do, how do you convince actors to take a boat with you to an offshore island? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I think eventually we'll find, we'll find a way to, to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so this interesting thing about, you know, whether you are apart and, and space and, and our sensibility to, to space, to location, uh, that relates to our training as well. So it comes up every time. Mm -hmm. But also this space allows us, as Nelson said, uh, to really share the training with, with the community. And uh, uh, sometimes we hold classes, uh, but usually throughout the year, uh, we, we hold jams, which is a, like a training platform that is available for all artists in Singapore, as long as you're in Singapore, who have learned either Suzuki or Viewpoint to come train with us. Um, and, and that's really something that's a, that features a big part in our company. Yeah. It's so interesting to me, just thinking of everyone here, but, and the conversations that have occurred over the last two days, there's a sense of, how do I put this? There's a sense of, yeah. Over and over again, like Toga, <laughs> Saratoga, <laughs> and now it's it's still. I mean, this sort of goes to your uh, point, John, about uh, it. It actually is starting to become slowly but more universal, from this <laughs> to this, <laughs> which is so moving. So we're kind of the internet. 
in, in, in that sense. <laughs> We're the web. I mean, we are this, this thing that keeps the matrix, you know? It's, it's very beautiful. It's a very beautiful idea of central point expansion. That's all I have to say. Well, no, and then the, and then the coming, I mean, together, which speaks to, you know, coming back. Yeah. Right? That, like, I, we, I think it was, I was talking to Bondo yesterday and, and talking about sort of the hunger that, that he felt um, in a lot of places, and particularly when we were all uh, training yesterday, what, you know, to just, to be there, to be here together, and speaking to this physical, you know, being in the room that Yanuka is talking about, and we have that sa the same feeling about the training, that, you know, that, that, that <coughs> it's an individual relationship that we all have with, with our training, right? And we, as was spoken about this morning, and asked a little bit, like, how do you carry it into other places and carry it with you and other kinds of work? But it's, it's almost like it, ex to, for me, and I'll speak, for myself, how about that? Um, <laughs> this um, idea for me that the training it, it's 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 in here, and then there's it also somehow manages to exist in this sort of space somehow that I can step into and 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 reconnect with myself and my people. Um, that is one of the big gifts I think that I'm still still poking around with. I think a little bit more about space and our training is also that um, in the beginning we're, we're also trying to um, spread the idea of active training in Singapore and it's not that common, people don't think about training. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they do but they, it's kind of like, you know, at the back of their mind, maybe I'll consider it, you know, uh, well let's see what, what, how it goes and all. And there were very often a lot, lots of, well, I, I would say, excuses like um, mm -hmm. there's no space, there's no time and, and, and uh, we don't know what to do. There's no people in a way. So it's quite important for us to just, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a space. I'm going to tell you it's not that difficult. If you can't find a space, I have a space here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just be there Monday evening. We wear our tabi. We'll just be there at 7.30. So just come. You know, I've, I've already cleared the path for you. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing you need to worry. You just have to, you just have to turn up. Which is very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The greatest, I think Anne said that. Yeah, the greatest challenge is turn up right, and train. So, so the space becomes something that, um, that makes no excuse for anybody. <laughs> yeah. I would like to say that they, and then, yeah. started for me with Ellen Lauren and J.F. in 1997 in Bogota, Colombia. And as it happened to everybody here, or most of the people here, that it was striking me so hard, the training, happened to be the same that Nelson was describing before about, I need something to do as an actor when I'm not rehearsing and I'm doing the show. So we went through this process of seven days of training, um, doing composition, b points, and Suzuki, of course. And at the end, as I was trying always to be in the first row, the training, I'm very enthusiastic. Uh, Ellen gave me the shinai and said, teach, train. I said, okay. <laughs> so I felt that legacy on my hands. And I was very, I was, I don't know, 27 at that point, And I was like, okay, I'll do this. So about the space, so I went to the theater I used to work with and asked, can I use the space of the theater from seven to nine every morning? And they say, yes, use it. So there was no Facebook, there was uh -huh. no, there was internet, but there was no this kind of social media right now we have. So I was saying person to person, uh, if you want to come to train with me, and at the beginning it was the company I used to work with, um, to come to train, seven to nine, and share with them this training I had just found. You know? And uh, it's a paradox, but the people who was less interested in the training with the company we used to work with. Uh -huh. <laughs> so maybe that's one of the reasons we work with these people that uh, we met during the training session. We don't see all the time. We don't work all the time in the same country, but we share a language and we share a passion, not only for the training, but for theater as well. Um, I continue with this work as a, as a teacher. I, I now work 
with the university in Colombia. It will give me more money if I do some workshops outside of the university, but I want some continuous line for the training as well. And it's better for me, or I think it's better to do it in a university when I see the, the students uh, this year, and the next as well, and the next as well. And we can build something together to make this legacy, really, that started with Ellen giving me the Shinai, we make this legacy stronger and stronger. So the space, we always find it. You know, I go to the connections I have and the, the contacts I have in Colombia, and I always say, I knock on a door, it's, it opens immediately. I say, okay, come. Sometimes we have been with Ernesto Martinez, who is a uh, um, former assistant to city companies, uh, workshops as well. We, we have been spelled. Uh, um, from some spaces because we stumped to her. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. So it was about breaking the floor, you know, and now we're understanding it's not, and blah, blah, blah. But you knock in the door and always open. And now for us, it's a big deal. We're in New York. We're going to do it, and we'll keep doing it. We have another project right now, and we'll find the space. Yeah. We know this. And it's yeah. inspiration we get from City Company. Okay, I went to other directors. I have been working with other people, but it's the inspiration this company has given to me, and we have collected, and we, and then. Yo voy a hablar en español. Para mí fue diferente porque yo conocí el entrenamiento y a la City Company por John Alex. Yo empecé a entrenar con John Alex en 1999, y solo 10 años después pude conocer personalmente a la City Company y pude venir a Skidmore, donde conocí a Tina. Y Tres años después, en el 2012, pudimos trabajar juntos. Sí, sí. Yo sé, que se en todas las clases que estaba enseñando con Ernesto Martínez en Bogotá. Porque Ernesto Martínez estaba aquí también, y estaba con Ellen y Jayette, pero estaba entrenando en otro lugar en Bogotá. Así que le dije a Ernesto, vamos a hacer esto juntos. Vamos a hacer esto juntos. Tenemos el camarín del carro, pero la empresa de la ciudad de Bogotá performó en 1999. And we, were, we had that space, so Ernesto came, and we were teaching, Gina was attending those classes. Those classes were for free. Uh, uh, math, uh, a teacher I have told me, no, 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 don't do that for free. At least a dollar. <laughs> they have to know, they have to pay something, at least one dollar. So we say, oh, okay, okay, one dollar. You get the dollar, you get the class, okay? <laughs> so what Gina is saying, she get to the classes we were teaching, then 10 years later, she was able to come to Skidmore and Saratoga and spend a month and see that what we're teaching was wrong? No, no. Yo le decía, era muy bravo, muy, 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 muy bravo. Me hacía, él me hacía sufrir muchísimo. Mucho, mucho lloraba. Ey, derecho, fuerte. Unos años después, en el 2002, John Alex fue mi maestro en la universidad. Years later, I'm a teacher at the university. Y nos dejó a todos traumatizados. And everybody has a trauma with that. Solo hasta hace poco nos dejó. <laughs> a little time. Dictamos juntos ahora clase en la Javeriana. Now we teach together at the University of Universidad Javeriana in Bogotá. He reemplazado, he tenido el honor de reemplazarlo en algunas she clases. Teaches my classes when I'm not in the university. Y ahora le pregunto por qué él ya no es tan duro con los estudiantes. She asks me why I'm not so hard with the students right now. Como no fue conmigo. As I used to be. He's getting older. Ahora son los estudiantes muy relajados. I'm getting soft. <laughs> Pues la historia es que para mí ha sido muy importante encontrar a este equipo con el que hablamos un mismo idioma. Y for, for her it's very important to find this team mm -hmm. which she shares a language with. Y el entrenamiento ha sido, este es el único entrenamiento que ha logrado unificar todas esas clases que uno ve durante la vida. El voz, eh, eh, trabajo corporal. Eh, And this voz. training is putting together for her everything she was going through at the university as voice classes, dance, movement, whatever. Y es lo que les digo a mis alumnos, es decir, yo no les digo, este es el entrenamiento que a ustedes les sirve, les digo, este es el entrenamiento que a mí me ha servido para poderme comunicar con ustedes y para poderme parar en un escenario, estar segura en un escenario. Mm -hmm. Es como, y, y estar con ellos ahora que ha sido, pues, es mi sueño, mm -hmm. es su realidad. She says that to her students right now, this is not the training, the only training, but it's the training I found that helped me to put together everything I've been through in my life as an actor. Y poder estar acá con la City Company. And be here with the City Company. Con Ann Bogart. And with Ann Bogart. It's very important for me. And we hope to be here in Japan. 
<laughs> wow, so, I mean, I knew this, I think I knew this anyway, but just hearing it, that, that, that the Suzuki method of actor training is so much more than just this training that you do in a room. Yep. It's, it's a lot bigger and deeper and, ooh, I'm getting a little weepy. Um, <laughs> dare I use the word spiritual? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's big, it's, it's big stuff. How many, how many people have been to Toga? Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I mean, I kind of have asked my company members because I haven't been um, yet. <laughs> what's it like to train there? Just like, what's it like to train there? Because it's so beautiful just from the pictures and seeing the video the other day. Oh my God, it's magnificent. Mm. Um, whew, so many things. The, the physical landscape is beautiful. It's incredibly hard to get there. So it's really, you start a journey from the minute you get on the plane, because you get these scant directions and you're like, ooh, okay, I'll figure it out somehow. So it's a commitment it right is, from the yeah. get-go. And you're in a country where you can't speak the language and you get on this little train and then you meet someone in a car and then you go up the hill and you're like, oh, wow. Um, it, but for me, the isolation of it is incredible because you are faced with yourself. There's no distractions. You, you don't have... Well, when I was there, the internet wasn't great, so it's like, okay, wow, I'm faced with this training five hours a day. It was five and something hours a day. It was very hot when I was there. Um, you look out the window when you're training onto this mountaintop, like, it's infinity, it's beautiful. Then this, there's these flies, these really vicious flies that um, if you're walking at, at dusk, and you stop, you will just get attacked by these flies that bite you. So in the training, if one of these flies lands on you, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it's, very, it's very personal. And it, to me, I first came to the training in Saratoga. So to be in this little bubble where you're outside of your regular life, and this even more so, it's, um, it's uh, you are, you're in this, countryside and there's space to look at yourself inside this work and here in New York yes you do go into the city company studio and you are in this space but then outside you're back to this real life thing you're back to your life but there it's it really gets to seep into your soul into your body and it's hard it's the level is up there um, and you do, you go to the river and you weep. <laughs> you can't walk and you're like, how do I get up tomorrow and do this again? Because I feel like I suck, I'm failing in everything, I'm failing at just being a human being. And then, <laughs> and then you go, no, okay, I'm learning all this stuff. And you, it, it allows you time and space for it to sink in. Mm. And that was, it's an incredible gift. I think we're always looking <clears throat> for that, you know, and finding yeah. spaces to train in and finding places in the world or in the country. Mm. Maybe one of the reasons we're here partially is that it is, as Anne said, away from New York City, fewer distractions. Mm. So that process of looking at yourself, it, there, there's fewer ways to escape it. Yeah. And that's, exactly. what, that's what we're looking for, is ways to prevent ourselves from escaping, looking at, the, yeah. at, at ourselves objectively, mm -hmm. which is what the training you know, yeah. ca can give us and does give us, but it's sort but of then like... you can run away from it. How can we, <laughs> how can we deepen that? How can yeah. we strengthen that? Maybe that goes to finding an island off the coast of Malaysia to go work, you know. But I think at the same time, there's a wonderful contradiction here, not because we were trying to be part of society, and right. we have something to say, mm -hmm. and we want to be part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and we want to be political and be part of, you know, the, the change that we all want. And at the same time, in order to do this, we go away. <laughs> <laughs> And so maybe we need both, yeah. yeah. Maybe th that's not the, the, the tension that we always talk about that it's in our life as well. We need space and time for ourselves to make the work and then when we feel ready, we <laughs> go in. <laughs> and New York is here, <laughs> a few hours away. Toga probably is <laughs> even further away. 
Well, really, Tina has has said a lot about what I feel as well when we were there, when I was there, and um, also another part of it is the whole discipline, mm. seeing the the Scott company do things, how they wake up like six, seven, and start breakfast together, and always having a company meeting at ten. 10, 10 something, 10 something, right? and never failing to do that, and um, taking turns to take to make breakfast for all of us, and um, and and so uh, so we are also given a few tasks to do, like just at least cleaning our own dormitory and uh, things like that, um, and being there right on time before before um, training starts, and and if we are to reach. Um, if we were to see a performance at 7, we have to reach by 6.45 and anything after that is considered late, right? So all this, yeah, it, 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 it hits you as a, as a great humanity lesson. I think a lot of us um, <clears throat> are there in the summer. I, I, I think I'm fortunate, or, or maybe not unfortunate, <laughs> to have been there in winter. And, and I think winter in Toga is quite a different creature. Um, um, got thick snows and uh, it's, it's lovely and dangerous at the same time. But, but, um, but w what I want to share is really a, 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 a small anecdote that I was there uh, at one point in winter to, to rehearse a play um, to, to be presented in the, in the summer festival, um, the following summer. Um, and every morning we have training. Right, with the with the Scott company, or sometimes on our own, there's a there's a group of international artists there uh, making work. So uh, one morning, I, I got out of my dorm and then to walk towards uh, Koyu Khan where we do our training, and it started snowing and started snowing quite heavily. So there were wind blowing in, in, in my face and all. I was walking alone along the road uphill to Koyu Khan, and then I pulled up my hoodie and I got my backpack and everything and trying to walk against the wind and then at the Far end, I saw this figure out there walking very, very slowly. And as I approached, I saw that it is one of the most senior actors in Scott, Stan Morrison. Right? He's really senior now, right? And he's walking very slowly against the snow, very slowly up the hill to trade. And as I walked, I passed him and I said, uh, Ohio Gotaimas, and he's not back to me and I continue walking. But that image never leaves me. Mm -hmm. This 70 over years old, old man, carrying his sword, no, and walking uphill towards Koyu Khan in the snow, slowly, step by step. But that is what this is about. I mean, it just dawned on me, that is the legacy. That is, that is, that is training, right? Mm -hmm. That is training. And, that training becomes lifestyle. Mm, yeah. It becomes what you do day by day in every step you take. And not, about, not just about swinging swords in the room. Mm. So, so that is what Toga did to me, mm. most importantly, I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> jump off from that to this idea of what being a part of the conservatory did because talking about being in that studio and yes especially you know when you're coming maybe for a shorter training or folks who live in New York all the time you know and you come and you train from what like you're there from 10 to 2 and then you go about your day you come back the next day but our being having the great gift and privilege in so on so many levels to be able to, to spend nine months um, training, and this was before City, um, ex, you know, expanded their space a bit and made and made made a second smaller studio, a little more space for students to be. Uh, it, before uh, our year, it was just the studio, the like lobby, and then there were office offices, you know, and so we were just. 20 people on mm -hmm. top of each other all of the time, um, passing around 
you know, wonderful things and also lots of illness. And um, we, um, <laughs> but I, 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 and it's different. And, and these are different. They're different experiences that overlap, right? I mean, that are in conversation. You know, to to go to Toga and to to, to be in that space, but also to have the opportunity to 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 be with sit in with one another and in that space, that studio to me, like the, the Dysler studio is like, a, a, to me feels like a very holy space as well. And to have watched City Company in, in a way um, too, you know, they, they, this is someone speaking about, 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 about um, Toga and watching um, Suzuki Company members, you know, they're picking up your bags and then they're over here and then they're making the thing and then they're in the office, you know, and it's a similar, that's what happens also at the studio, uh, to, to, to be around the, you know, one moment you're getting, you know, it, corrections from Ellen in the studio and then like you walk out to, to go to your locker and Ellen's in the office on the phone, you know what I mean, and then like, you know, I mean, it's, it's all the things and all the things and I think that is another big part it, from what I'm hearing from you guys and what Barney's touching on too, this idea of the training going beyond what we do in the studio, beyond the, beyond Suzuki and viewpoints into ethos and ethic, which came up, you know, earlier this morning. And I think that for me, and I think I can speak to, for the, for, for the syndicate to say that some of that is what keeps, that example, that model is what keeps us moving forward. We say, okay, and you, and, and how to, how to work hard, how to be together. And if we have, models for this, we have examples for this, um, that we, at Akiko recently, I believe it was Akiko who said she didn't think we'd make it for years? Thank that you. Was, that was in confidence. That was in confidence. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> oh, well, was it? Oops. I didn't know that. Um, no, um, I didn't know that that was, anyway, but I mean, the idea that that was Cool, it's been a great success. Um, but that we are translating right now. <laughs> we can, that we can keep going, I think, is another thing that I'm... <laughs> well, I'm done. I think one of the things that the training does instill in you is not to run away from obstacles. So, um, the incredible thing about this is, you know, we're from all these different countries. Oh, it's never going to work. Yes? Mm. Well, okay, let's try. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Um, the bar, you, it, nothing is impossible. Like I think Mr. Suzuki said, international collaboration is impossible. So therefore, we should therefore try. We should, therefore, we should try. And um, and it, it's the same in the training. This training is impossible. Okay, well, I'm just going to go to the bar then. You know, no, you're not. You're going to push through it, and you learn something about yourself. You learn something about how we exist. I don't know. It it it, it is a yeah. I don't know what I'm saying here, but mm. there's something about facing an obstacle and pushing through it instead of turning away from it that mm. you kind of take away into everything you do. Mm. Yeah, okay. the fight or flight. Yeah. yeah. I think there's something <coughs> very interesting here because we were talking with Manson before and because we, we've been here in 2008 together. <laughs> and then uh, Emily, who's part of that company, mm -hmm. was here in 2008. <laughs> well, <we're at> <laughs> <laughs> so there's a horizontal line <laughs> <laughs> brings us together as well. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me think that uh, there's nothing special about this. I mean, there is, but at the same time, it is possible. We're not doing something crazy. <laughs> it's just that out of this program, out of this training, and uh, if you try, it's there. I mean, it's something that nowadays it, it is possible. Um, and it's been done, you know, by you guys here. And I'm sure there's a lot of other examples that are not in the room and, <laughs> and in the room as well. Uh, so, I mean, this is a great discovery for me because I, I thought before that it was something so special that I maybe I, I wouldn't even try it because it was too hard. It was, you know, <laughs> something you impossible. Need yeah, you need a lot of money, you yeah. need to be somebody. Uh, <laughs> to try and do stuff. You know, you have Peter Brook that's done at an international theatre company. You're like, okay, he's done it. What, 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 what could I do? Uh, but, you know, seeing so many examples some, somehow makes it more human, more possible. And uh, it takes out this aura of, you know, something that is uh, so high that you cannot even try. It is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 
What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's try. <laughs> You're gonna it's fail. Awesome. That's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. 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 It also seems to me as a as a U.S. citizen, it seems to me that it's so necessary at the moment that we have artists and others who are trying to cross borders. Yeah. Um, I think not just in the U.S. I, your country too, I know, has been just gone through a very scary election, and I know many others in this room are coming from places where we are uh, facing what isolationism and um, racism are doing to our countries, and how, how are we going to respond? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that one of the things that the training has taught me is um, how to keep working in the face of impossibility and total despair how to keep going, um, which sounds sounds bad, but it's not. It's it's uh, it's a great gift to know that you can know that you're failing and still keep trying, which is uh, I think something that politically artists can do. Mm. So. And there are so many more companies around the world that have been either born from directly or certainly directly influenced by both the Suzuki method of actor training and the Scott Company. This, I mean, we are just a small little yeah. um, picture, uh, part of a much larger picture, which is, it's A, encouraging, and B, um, makes you feel a little bit more brave, yes. <laughs> because you've got your, your, your warrior friends out there with you, you know, your warrior art friends, and, and also that we can, and this has come up, and that, that we speak, we, even though we come from different cultures and countries, and we might not speak the same actual verbal language, we speak a language, and we, and we can meet each other and have a conversation because of the training. And that, to me, is powerful and huge. Incluso, incluso la primera vez que estuve acá, mi inglés era peor del que es ahora. <laughs> y fue, era, me daba mucho miedo porque no creía que no iba a entender y era increíble eh, en el escenario en los entrenamientos todo lo sentía y todo lo podía entender y por favor she's saying that her English was much worse the first time she came here uh, than what it is now and uh, no matter what she could always understand what was going on in the room and what was that they were doing and so it went you know over the, the language barrier mm -hmm. maybe before we open it up to questions um i'll i'll I'm, I'm because i'm curious maybe you guys are too if each of you each of the groups would just talk for just briefly about how you use the training um kind of practically like when do you train how long do you train for who leads is there a leader how, do you teach each other? Um, do you do you teach? Uh, and 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 then also kind of what's behind that is how does it inform your work, or how do you think it informs your ensemble or group of friends building, or your 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 maybe your work or if it does. Then we'll open it up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> when we train as a group, um, we. We train, we don't have one person leading from out the front. We all train together at the same time and we lead from within, if that makes sense. Um, we will train before a show for about 15 minutes as, as a warm up. For me, it's important in Bogota because it's really high altitude and it's so hard to breathe. <laughs> Stomping in Shakahachi is a different thing in Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> so and then, then, then we make our work. So it, it's a, a way to come together, get on the same page, um, and we do that before rehearsals too. And we also teach, do you want to talk about teaching outside? You know, that's a no, but for me, she's the leader, you know? <laughs> <laughs> not maybe because she has been a toga, but I tried to follow Tina, and I was saying yesterday that it was funny, but I tried to get to the level of energy that Tina has in the room. Um, now that uh, Bondo was talking, I, I was realizing maybe we should do it two and two mm -hmm. when we train. But even Lorenzo, who is the director, but he's also a performer, trains with, with us. Uh, it makes us come together, as Tina said, and share the same language, not a style, you know, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Sometimes our musician trains too. Yes, yeah. also. We have a musician that collaborates with us. That's the way we, 
we use it. It's the line that crosses our life and the way we get together also after many months of not being together. To me, it helps also uh, as an outside eye and director, uh, because I <clears throat> there's a way for me to understand what what can I see in them, what can I ask them to do somehow, what tasks I can give them, <clears throat> and it helps me, of course, to push whenever I feel that I need to, uh, but also. Uh, know the kind of thing that we, we, we could do, that we, we could accomplish. Uh, it doesn't mean that we get there, that I get there, <laughs> never happened. Uh, but I know, you know, that there's a target out there and that's what we're shooting at. Uh, so every time in performance I cannot always train with them because it's often, you know, last minute things to <laughs> fix and prepare, but I, I try to always be there when, when we perform. Uh, but if I can, yeah, I'll, I'll happily train with, with them, even if then I'm sitting in the booth running so tired. It's, it's mm -hmm. part of d doing the work together. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Dino was, was, was pointing, we're not, we're not training only when we get together. Mm -hmm. We train also mm -hmm. separately and we teach as well, so we're <coughs> on the training almost all the time. Um, so, as I was saying about the jam platform, we, we hold it almost every, every Monday evening except when we break, because we need the space to put set for our rehearsal. Um, it's always three hours. Uh, first one half hour is Suzuki, second half is uh, Viewpoints. And uh, totally inspired by the city company, uh, we would rotate within the ensemble to facilitate uh, the sessions. And, um, and, and each of the member would come up weekly with um, certain things to work on that day. Like today I'm working on fiction. The focus of the day. Yeah, today we're working on speed. And, um, and so, so we suggest all these things uh, to everybody who attends that mm -hmm. session uh, to work on. And, um, and at the end of every training session, we would sit down for you know, five to 10 minutes discussion. And, and, and we would talk about difficulties we met during that session uh, trying to adjust uh, trying to address the the focus that was suggested to, to work on that day um, other than that the ensemble ourselves we also train weekly with Nelson uh, and to work on um, other than Suzuki and also other things uh, but maybe Nelson can talk about what yeah. yeah. So, so, so the Monday Jam platforms provide the um, the regular training for the for the ensemble as well as the community, right? And um, we, we we continuously learn and relearn from fellow artists among us in, in that platform. And and then I think every Thursday we try to keep it to Thursday. And the the ensemble will gather, and then we will of course do Suzuki and viewpoints, and also extrapolations, extensions, and and things uh, that, that come out from these two trainings and, and we're, we're beginning to develop our own uh, actors work uh, that, that comes out from these two training as well. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what we do. So, so basically we, um, in, the, in the most ideal case we have, uh, we, we train twice a week if not once uh, throughout, through the year as much as possible. And then besides that we have then the classes that we um, offer um, periodically to the community uh, to teach. And then we've have, we have also uh, begun to go to schools uh, to share our training in, in, in Suzuki and viewpoints. And I'm actually happy to report that uh, uh, by next year, all, all three main colleges, uh, arts colleges in Singapore, would have both Suzuki and viewpoints in their core curriculum. <laughs> But, but in terms of how, how it uh, helped maybe uh, apply to our work, um, because su surprisingly in Singapore, although, although um, most of the actors that I have on stage will be speaking Mandarin and all this, but th because Singapore, we, we don't have a long tradition of um, acting methods or, or acting schools, so they, they kind of all come from different backgrounds. And, and really, when you, when you look at them, right, they sometimes feel like they're all in different place, right, in, dif in different worlds. So I, I find that the training, um, 
whilst developing a kind of a common language in, in moving your center, in, in breathing, and in, in the way we understand the body, uh, sort of provide, a, kind of offered a, a common language to pull them together so that when I work with my actors, they, they can together conjure a unified world because after all, that is what I'm trying to present to the audience on stage. Whatever world that is, it's a unified world that, you, it, that is believable. So, so that, that helps a lot, um, together with viewpoints as well, uh, to, to do that. And um, um, I, I think that's the most important part that, that, you know, to, to apply uh, to the work. Um, but also, the, this, there's one more thing I was going to say, is that um, yeah, yeah, moving towards the, the difficulty, you know, like having done the training, I think I, I feel very comfortable telling the actors that, um, so how do you feel about that, you know? If they say, yeah, I feel really good, I say then try something else. <laughs> you know, and they immediately understand that where, where, what that instruction meant. In yeah. Way, right? so, yeah. Um, we, the syndicate, trains when we're in rehearsal every day. Um, we usually just do an alphabetical order. You two, the first two in the alphabet are going to do Suzuki Mew points day one, day two, and so on. So we just rotate through. Um, and most of us have, are fortunate to have training groups, friends that we train with in our homes around the world um, so that we can train on our own in preparation for that. Um, but we do not teach the training. Um, if people, we, we train with friends who have experience in it. Yeah. Um, and we often cast people who also have experience in it because that's our artistic home and community. Um, and when we're working with someone who does not have training in Suzuki or Viewpoints, sometimes we'll share little tastes and then say, if this speaks to you, uh, go, go learn from the source. Go to City Company or go to Suzuki Company. Um, but that, that is how we approach it. And how do you think about how it affects relates to the work oh. specifically. I don't think we'd be able, we because because we're so because it takes so much work to get into the room together <laughs> um, or it just takes a lot of time and planning. Um, we don't often have very long to rehearse. We we've, yeah. we've we've staged yeah. entire plays and teched them in 2 weeks. <laughs> um, often that's often how we're working. I mean it's not ideal but it's possible. Yeah. Um, and the, the only reason we can do that is because we come into the room and hit the ground and begin training on, immediately um, so that we're ready. Great. Let's <laughs> open it out. Rich. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a big um, I, I don't feel like I'm the only person in the room that has this struggle uh, of, of coming and training and, and being up with this passion to go home and share all of this stuff that I just learned, and yet having this undeniable fear of fucking it up. <laughs> and I, I, I so we, we're, there's many teachers in the room, and uh, so there's, there is no line, there's no, Ellen didn't Hand me the Sheena. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't think she's going to do it this weekend either. <laughs> but, 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 so, so, and Mondo and, and was talking about this, this um, where do you get this, uh, what was the thing? This moral authority to be on the stage. When do I get the moral authority to go home and because believe me, the people doing the number of people doing Suzuki in Montana is relatively few. <laughs> and so I, I need a group. I need a group to train with, and I want to make that group. Um, and uh, but then we also talk about the the product and the and is that I, I don't want to dilute the product. I don't want to bastardize the product. I feel good about it. I feel, uh, but. So there's a fear. Yeah. And uh, and so what? So maybe Megan, you could speak to that, or anybody in the room about that fear and uh, wanting to get it right and wanting to not be a part of the problem <laughs> as, as it spreads out. 
They're all part of the problem. Um, Mark, <laughs> <laughs> the place you went where they didn't do the something. Yeah. Right? I think Megan did speak to it a little bit before, and I think there's a distinction between the word share and the word teach. Yes. Yeah. And so I think the problem, there, it, there becomes a problem when you do this four weeks at Skidmore and go, oh, I, I know everything, yes? <laughs> and you go back home and you go, I'm the authority on the Suzuki training because no one else here does it and I know everything because mm. you don't know anything, right? <laughs> um, I don't feel, I, I don't feel Well, that. yeah. But if you approach it as like, I have a, and this is what I first learned as a teacher, I got thrown into this classroom and I was like, oh geez, I don't know anything. And it's like, no, I know a little bit more than the people who are taking the class. So I'm gonna share my knowledge with you. And I always say, as Megan said before, I'm not an expert in this. I'm teaching you what I know in the spirit that I, it was passed on to me. And then if you do want some expertise, go here, go to Toga, yeah? This is what I'm bringing to you. So I think, and I've been mulling over this a lot over the years, because I have encountered teachers that do say, I'm the authority and it's this way, and you know, you have these guru teachers that, it, and then you go outside of that and you go, oh wow, that's really not what the training is is but um, I think if you I think that having that doubt in your mind is a good thing for when you go and you share it because you're not <coughs> saying I'm the expert here it's like this is what it is to me I'm sharing what it is to me but go here go there to get what I have been passed on does that make sense I hope yeah. I miss that. I was thinking about this yesterday when we were training together, um, and someone asked, someone asked Bondo, is this written down? Where is this written down? <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> there, there are books, yeah, but there's not something that's going to tell you every piece of the vocabulary or every criteria, because it's, it, is a, it is oral tradition. It is passed from person to person and body to body. So then if we are passing it on, it's up to us to know as much as we can. I think what you were saying, Maria, about, um, about the why and the what, what, is it, what is it for, is really important to be asking ourselves as we're doing our own work and then especially when we decide to do that transfer. I mean, what I would like to add on is that, I, I, personally, I think, I think despite that, um, I, I believe there is a pedagogy to it. Right, and I, I think whether you like it or not, you have to spend time seriously looking at the pedagogy. Because at, at nine years, I, I always tell them we don't teach anything that we do not know, that we do not know enough ourselves in the body. So, so whoever goes out to facilitate or to teach uh, has to go through at least a few years of doing it themselves, right? And then uh, really seriously trying to figure out a kind of pedagogy that you can deliver the training, although body to body, but in, in, in a clear and um, uh, um, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, with, with clarity, I think. So as because I, I, I do feel that in, in, in some way, the training can be very easily misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I, I don't want to be part of that <laughs> process of I, making, yeah. yeah so I, can, I can share my experience, but I, when I came, first came here in 2008 and I took this program, then I did the advanced training the two weeks in August, and then I came back and did the, the winter training, I think. So I did a couple of weeks, basically. And when I went back to Italy, uh, I, I was basically the only one who done that, because it's not something that it's done <laughs> in my country that I didn't know anybody else who had done it. So I thought, well, I'll gather a couple of <laughs> friends, actors, and try to share it. I was not trying to teach it, because it was like, felt I couldn't. Uh, but then in the room, I realized that what I could share was very little. Was very, maybe it's just the right, the, the base idea. But then I, I couldn't and didn't have the tools. So I was like, OK, <laughs> wrong. Uh, Thank you for coming. <laughs> 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 and I started coming back uh, here uh, at least once a year. I would spend a couple of months here and keep training with 
with them. And uh, now, basically, I feel I can teach how to go up and down. <laughs> Maybe. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the old basic number one, which is now three, eight. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and so I'm going, you know, step by step, try to slip in little things and see how I do. Of course, trying to take care not only of the training, but also of the people that I have in front of me. Mm -hmm. Melissa? I was going to offer this, and you can correct me uh, if you want to, but like you're in a desert, like a, you have like food deserts, right? And if you're in a training desert, <laughs> and I often felt like that when I was in Houston uh, alone. <laughs> And um, what I ended up doing was I just, I would go to, I found people, I found these amazing yoga teachers, mm -hmm. and I would practice energy and breath and, and balance and all of those things in yoga. So I would, I would bring it with me. Huh. And that, that made me feel like I was, there was some continuity, even though my workshops had been broken up, and I didn't feel so alone. So even though, I mean, and you find people that are, they're like-minded in a certain way. You know, they have that sort of, this driver to live with more, in, live a life of, of more integrity than just the day-to-day, -day, you know, passing through. And that, that fed me and kind of keeps me whenever I'm away from the country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And also, I think over time, I certainly, I, I suspect my colleagues maybe feel, feel this way too. Um, as the years go on, you have to reify your relationship to the training. You, to, you, you, you have to keep coming to it, with, to use a hackneyed phrase, with beginner's mind, you know. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Other questions? Oh, you have more? No, just maybe I wanted to point out that uh, maybe what leads to, you know, having gurus in the room and people that say that they think they know everything is uh, that the, the way uh, the, the, the training as we experience is structured. There's one person, you know, with the stick telling the others what to do. And that's sort of a hierarchical structure. So when you bring it out of this context, when you don't have a more much more expert person in front of you uh, that could tell you what to do and you try to fit in those shoes yeah. that's where the problem is because you, you, you can't <laughs> so maybe there's another way to share it uh, yes by saying yeah I'm not the person that sits you know facing the rest of you we're just in this together so <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. has to be a it has to be a dialogue, not yeah. a top down. Mm. And like whoever's leading is really just in dialogue with the yeah. training. And if you do, you just want, if you're wanting to find collaborators and share it, so you have the common training, it's a different thing to go. Okay, I'm going to go back to Montana and do a week's workshop and charge five hundred dollars. And after one week, you know, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I think it is possible to just get into a group and go. Okay, let's get on the same page. I'm going to share this with you. Um, the other thing yeah. also just have people to train with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, uh, oh, okay. Very briefly, just that whole idea of like the drop and, you know, the ever widening concentric circles of training. Um, in San Francisco, I mean, we had the, the good fortune to have companies start bringing out city company, um, many, many in the 90s, and that's where I got into. And then, and then for a full series, we just we recognized the need to train more people so we could have more people to play with, and that, so we bring them out. Ever you know, we took that responsibility now of of bringing the city company out every other year or so since 2002. I think we've been doing it so that we can ourselves keep training, but also now there's so many. So many companies and individual artists that are using sequences that you see all the time that, that we are the opposite of the desert, you know, <laughs> and that is because we took the responsibility to, well, selfish responsibility yeah. to like an interest to keep our 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 teachers coming to train to train us and our community. So you know, connect and make it happen.
larger actor pool of people who are connected to their bodies and, and a certain rigor. Uh, and we were lucky enough that right as we were thinking that Bonjo and Ellen were coming through with, with Bob and Maroon, uh, and we start dating at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, my last question. <laughs> as, a, as company? As company. <laughs> yes, yes. But this is uh, do you mean long term or short term? Either. Either. Uh, Dreams, uh, hopes, the plans. addition to that question is, or are you just so busy with present work that it's hard to see in the future? But those yes. Future, no, no, no. We have, we have, we have uh, <laughs> ideas and projects. Uh, for example, Tina is coming to teach at the university in Colombia, invited by me in, in creating this, this uh, vinculo, you know, like this bond. bond with the university, bringing Tina to teach there. And also we have a project as company or a bunch of friends together to do another project together as well that we plan to have at the Iberoamericano next year, you know. We just and got our first grant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, for myself, I want to be a better producer as well because I found myself as a producer uh, creating this company. You know, it's like now I have to produce, and I used to be really lazy <laughs> about that. You know, so my I, dream is to have a producer. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have money, <laughs> space. Yeah. I used to have because I used to have to work on television when I, I met them. That's, that's what I say. Come on, guys, come to Colombia. I pet it up, you know. <laughs> and this is called Vueltas Drogas because it means like in Islam, it means like, it means like risky business. Mm -hmm. So we, go, we want to keep doing more risky business in this <laughs> artistic <laughs> path we're trying to go through. So yeah, yeah, I'm enthusiastic about it because I say, yes, we have plans yes. sometimes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I like to keep building on what we have. So we, we've had a pretty good run. We've been invited to festivals. Um, the festivals that we've been to have paid us. Like New York is hard because we're, we're taking a huge risk here and it's, it's not a, a, the done thing for us. But um, for me, I think to be able to continue this and pay ourselves more than the 50 euros that we've made each <laughs> um, and to keep going, I think, and see what is possible, um, just take more steps and swivel, swivel, they <laughs> climb. The tree. Like in the yeah, long term. Exactly. Well, I have, uh, of course, I think one of the dreams would be to have a space yes. <laughs> that we could all <laughs> go together. Uh, I have a, actually, in Italy, in the countryside, I have two houses that are basically almost collapsed. One doesn't have the roof, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's a place that I own because I inherited from my grandmother. And so one of my dreams would be to build a residency there and have a space where people can come. And stay. I, and want, I want that kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Colombia, we'll start there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is something more, maybe more <laughs> real for me at the moment, and I'm trying to understand how, but of course, the big dream would be to keep working together, find a way to keep doing this. I, we want to have a company that supports full time actors. You want to pay them a full-time salary so that they have no excuse. <laughs> Not sure. Which I think shouldn't be that hard because that's how dance companies work anyway. Um, and then after that, I want a bigger space. <laughs> and then after that, I want a theater. I don't know that, how that's going to happen in Singapore, but it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I think. I think there's so much uh, consumerism going on now that sometimes we are we're, we're being consumed by consumerism and um, and often I'm, I'm trying to find ways to to not just have my audience consume my art but that they can 
be offered the chance to participate in the discussion of art. So, so we, we created things like um, we serve tea to the audience at the end of every performance and encourage them to stay back and uh, chat with us about we, anything. We give them rum, it's the Colombian way. Yeah. <laughs> Red wine and, and tea as well, yeah. And, and also, um, for, for the actors, uh, I try to do that as much as possible, that before every show, before we open the door to the audience, I get my actors to go to the audience seats, walk the aisles and pick up all the trash in the audience seat because you, you have to be prepared to, to welcome the audience into your house. So, so to me, it's no difference from the Suzuki training. That's what you, the, training the, the moral authority to be on stage, to own that theatre and, and welcome the audience. So, so things like that I, I try to instill in the company and, and because at the end of the day, I think, I think 10 years, 20 years down the road, I, I don't want my audience to remember, say, hey, remember nine years did this really great production or they, they won this award? That, that, that to me is not the most important thing. But how I want them to talk about how nine years have transformed them, mm -hmm. how, how nine years have shown them that there are, there are other ways to do things. There are mm -hmm. other ways to create and discuss art. In, in this small island called Singapore. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think my three goals, hopes and dreams for the syndicate right now um, are one, one of our company members is about to have a baby. So we're working on childcare for um, our company members as we are, many of us are women identified and many of us may become parents sometime in our future. So trying to figure out how to make that happen. Um, we have a program called the Incubator where we set aside part of our, our budget every year specifically for our company members to request funds for the first steps of their projects. Um, so that can be you can request money to go fly to Juniata and direct a project or you can request help, producing help in a project that you're working on um, or if you're writing a play to do a reading, whatever. You, where I, my hope is that the Incubator will become a program that's not just open to our company, yeah. but also a way that we can support other artists who might not have access to the institutions that we do have access to. Um, so I'm trying to grow that. Uh, and I hope you guys will be part of it, <laughs> or we can help support you. And the third thing, um, I went, I recently saw Taylor Mack uh, speak a little bit about, uh, about their work in the world. And uh, Judy, Taylor uses the pronoun Judy sometimes. <laughs> um, Judy said that when, when Judy stopped worrying about what New York City could give them as an artist and started worrying about what does New York City need, what are the revolutionary spaces that art can create, and that's when the art got good. So I hope that our, our work will do that as well. just turning three, so that means we can make steps and we can make little sentences. <laughs> um, yeah, so for the future, I hope we can deepen our voices and strides, and also that, that we challenge ourselves to keep asking questions, what for, how, to challenge ourselves, but also our audience. Mm -hmm. And build up an audience, actually. <laughs> That's also an important thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, big dreams. And time travel, please. <laughs> better, better internet connections. That would yes. be great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they're speaking to all the things that I hope for, too. I mean, I think when we start to we imagined that we were making a commitment that was for a long haul, and it's still true. And it keeps changing what it looks like from day to day, year to year, month to month, as bodies move through space and time and go to back to Chicago and LA and, and I, who knows, I'm Pennsylvania up into the now. Mm -hmm. And so we keep having to reimagine different certain things but for me, you know, Megan, yes, spoke to some of these very specific goals, and I think that's one thing I'm really proud of is of the syndicate under, particularly with Megan and Ellie, um, who is our other co-artistic director, Eleanor Riley Condit, like their their beautiful leadership. When we realized we couldn't all, for us, a uh, completely hierarchical model was not happening. <laughs> um, 
they're these, we have concrete things, we have plans, we have things put in place or things where, you know, the w we're trying to set up systems that we hope will support us. But we're also still nimble and we go, like, like, well, we didn't have artistic director at first, right? And then we were like, no, that is not how we're gonna do. Or like, we'll discover this thing, this part doesn't work. And I think that's one of the gifts of still being young um, and, 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 and having the space to learn. But to me, the big, the big thing, especially in, in being reminded being here, is like, that's my, just my dream, is, is that, in, that, that we have a 25th year, you know? Well, speaking of 25th year, is it's, um We've made a commitment to each other to, to go the long haul. And it's hard. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I needed this weekend, Ellen, to get a shot in the arm. And I feel so inspired and rejuvenated and moved by all of you. And I really needed this. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. So, uh, thank you to our um, panelists for coming from so far to yes. come yes. and talk to us. Thank you for the people on HowlRound who have been watching this conversation. Thank all of you for uh, asking brilliant questions and for listening intelligently. The next one of these will be Suzuki and Anne. So um, we're, we're getting, <laughs> we're Take ramping up. <laughs> <laughs> and more training this afternoon. Good. Yeah, so. Allie has in her hands the tickets, your tickets, for Trojan Women tonight. Okay. City company members and partners of city company members, you'll get yours before.